Welcome. My name is Matt. This is Hidden Light. And today we're going to do something slightly unusual. We're going to do a shootout. Shoot down. Smack down. I want to see the difference between an old school. This, is, this isn't really old school for 645. This is like actually quite modern. Uh, film 645 and modern digital 645 medium format i put those in heavy quotations because honestly the sensor size is not the same we'll do a little diagram here so you can see but a film 645 negative is larger than a digital medium format sensor by and large certainly in this fuji gfx 50r which i have accidentally fallen in love with it's really good ah guys i've spent so long shooting film that it's getting to the point now where I really enjoy shooting on a digital camera because I can shoot faster and I can sketch more and I don't have to wait for the film to get processed and it costs less and, and, and. Now, the only reason it costs less is because I can get cameras at a screaming deal because I own a camera store. Uh, this camera is $1,000. You could buy this camera today. Well, actually, I'm not going to sell it for like another week. But you could buy it for a thousand bucks. And every time you press the shutter on this camera, it'll cost you about two dollars. Or you can buy this kit for five thousand dollars. And every time you press the shutter, it costs you almost nothing. Like tenths of a cent in terms of how long the camera will last before it gives out and you have to buy a new one. So you can take a whole lot of film photos for the $4,000 difference between these two setups, right? A whole lot. Uh, that being said, I am curious to see what two similar size sensors using similar lenses, these are both 120 millimeter F4 lenses. I'm curious to see what the differences are. Um, Taylor Pendleton, uh, grain check on YouTube, check her out, subscribe, follow, whatever shot with a 645N or a 645 of some variety for quite a while and got some really gorgeous results out of it. And then she upped her game to a Mamiya RZ67 and absolutely crushed it. That is not a fair comparison. You cannot compare almost medium format to a 67 sensor because it's just the film is is incredible. What Boca does at 6.7, 6.9, and then up to large format is just not even a fair comparison. Let alone the Pentax 6.7 with the 105 2.4, which is, as far as I'm concerned, the holy grail for medium format. That being said, I want to see what the differences are. I want to see how these two things behave and what you get for that extra $4,000, aside from being able to take an infinite number of digital photos all the time. So we're going to take both of these cameras out, set them up, and photograph the same subjects with nearly the same compositions, and see. So um, let's load up some film and go do that. Ready to go. The goal here is not necessarily like fine art, it's just like shoot some stuff so that we can do a direct comparison. So I'm going to try and play around with stuff that's got a fair amount of detail. I'm going to try and play around with like bocaliciousness. So shoot them a little closer to wide open and see what the two areas look like. We'll just go wander around and snap off whatever, 16 frames on each camera. Ready, go. For whatever reason, the autofocus isn't working, so I can't get it to... Now it will. Won't autofocus if you're at frame zero. Who knew? All right, there's autofocus. Yeah, close enough.
highly detailed but also still interesting. That's gonna be a problem. <laughs> what about these burbs? You can just call me a wildlife photographer. Sick! Let's see, that's two stops under. Let's open up. F8 and be there. So the Fuji stops down and then focuses, which is rare and somewhat silly. The Pentax is focusing wide open, and then as I press the shutter, it stops down and makes the exposure. So when I'm looking through both cameras, the Fuji automatically gives me a depth of field preview, which I don't like. It drives me a little nuts, and there may be a setting for me to turn that off. But just looking through the two cameras with your finger half pressed because you're focusing, the Pentax looks way better. Pentax looks way better. It looks buttery and delicious. So close, but so far. All right, let's do a real macro test. I super cannot read the meter inside this camera. But I can read the meter inside this camera. Oh yeah. Whoa. Don't move. Nice. Thousand and five six? Oh yeah, banging. Right there. Thousand and five six he says. It even looks better just looking through the lens. Like it looks warmer. Because I'm looking at Looking at real life um, through a, like a, just a regular filter, that, but the way that it looks through this lens versus through this one is quite different. <sighs> Pentax looks great though. Nice, nice, nice. 500 at 11. Killing it. there was a good way to show this viewfinder versus this one because it's there's not even a comparison the pentax is a joy to look through and the fuji is like this soulless digital garbage okay there is a shot over here that i want Yikes. still pretty good It does sound good, doesn't it? Ah, so close. Oh no. Don't mind me. Just fishing with a lab mic. Got it. 
125 at 5.6. Motherfucker. You can do it. Oh no, that was the second to last frame. We're so close. And then one more with the digital here. Ah, sick. All right, photography complete. Now we gotta go drop the film and uh, see what the results are like. Ready, go. Okay, so the results are somewhat predictably predictable and not really that surprising. The thing, honestly, that surprised me the most was the difference between the user experience in using both cameras. Using the Pentax 645 was a joy. It just sort of was great to use. Like the focus, once I figured out how to press the front shutter so that the camera would load the rest of the film, uh, was awesome. Looking through the viewfinder is a treat. It's warm and beautiful. Like looking through that camera, at least through that lens, feels like looking at the world through Portrait 400, which is what I shot. And it's sort of like my default go-to film. It's slightly warm, slightly California at sunset. Looking through the Fuji. On the other hand, you're looking at the EVF, so it's not a true rangefinder, and it feels like you're looking at a computer screen, because you are. And it's gross, and there's a bunch of data everywhere, and sort of cluttered, and yes, you can turn some of that stuff off and make it a little more simple, and yes, you can change like the size of the image inside the EVF, whatever. <sighs> it wasn't as good. But the results are more or less predictable. So let's take a look at those. I've got here, what we're gonna do is there's the full frame shot from each camera side by side. And then there's, uh, I think it's like a 60% crop of each one. So not even 100% because 100% was ridiculous. Like the files out of the Fuji are so big and my scans are pretty big, uh, but they don't, they're not, it's not the same. <laughs> So um, the, Fuji, the Fuji files are 50 megapixel files straight out of the camera. The film scans are scanned on a copy stand on an A7R4. So the files are actually larger. There are more pixels in my film scans than there are on these Fuji shots. Uh, and the film was inverted and dealt with in Negative Lab Pro as a batch. So I'm not gonna sit there and do these one by one and really like put in the effort. I'm just gonna like see what Negative Lab Pro makes of them. And then we'll look at those against the Fuji files straight out of the camera. So here we go, frame one. Okay, so obviously the first thing that I'm noticing here is warmth and contrast. So out of one of the cameras, which shall remain nameless, I'm getting a lot more warmth and we're getting a little bit more of a California at sunset sort of feel. We're getting a, a more teal blue in this frame than we are over here in this much darker blue, which honestly is probably more what it actually was that day. So like, yeah, okay, if we jump into the crop, uh, the files have, or haven't they, switched sides. There's no consistency here, right? The goal is to like, make you look at each picture each time and be like, okay, which, which is which. So here's one version and here's another version. You're looking at the warmth difference. You're looking at the sharpness difference, which honestly is extreme, right? Like the files out of this Fuji are stupid sharp. They're crazy sharp. And even with sharpening added in post-production, uh, my film scans aren't really coming even close. And I don't know if that's because uh, the film is physically larger, so I get like a, the crop is way different. I don't know where that comes from, but you'll see that as sort of a theme throughout all of them. 
So the two different cameras showing their two slightly different aspect ratios. <laughs> and here's a crop, right? So I'm getting, at least the way that Negative Lab Pro dealt with these, I have the highlights are much closer to blowing out and things are getting a little crazy over here. The skies are continuing to be a little closer to teal than to blue. Um, and then the Fuji, I've got like way better highlight detail and retention. I was, when in doubt, I was exposing for film rather than for digital and just assuming that I could deal with the digital later because on the Fuji, you pretty much can recover those highlights if you overexpose, which is not how we typically recommend you shoot a digital camera. Typically, you want to overexpose film, underexpose digital. In this case, I just shot it for film because that was the important part to me. Next spray. Oh yeah, and these like, uh, not necessarily in order. <laughs> they should be, but okay. So uh, yeah, more or less the same sort of result. There's a little bit of a green shift happening in here. Um, the portrait is ten tending towards like a, a heavy blue green shift in the shadows, whereas the Fuji is not necessarily doing that. And then here's a crop in on both files. In this case, I think the film either is sharper because the camera hit the focus better or is acting sharper because of the obscene amount of grain uh, that I'm experiencing here, plus a little bit of extra sharpening probably in post. But like, you know, both good results, definitely. But like, look at the green in this window on film versus the green in the window on digital. Very different sort of feeling. Okay. This is the thing that I was really most interested in. I'm a wide open, bocalicious kind of boy. So I wanted to see if we do a close focus experience, what the background areas are going to do, how they're going to feel. And in this case, despite the fact that the film is a much larger area, so we're getting less um, out of focus bocaliciousness, they both look really really good. I like just looking at the brick texture in the building behind, looking at the snow and grass texture behind, like ignoring the colors. Um, gorgeous. They both look excellent. And if we crop in on those locks, you can kind of see which one is film here because we've got um, a lot more grain and a, a blue green. Again, that sort of cyan shift that we're experiencing. And that could just be negative light pro versus the digital, um, but both very sharp, both really gorgeous. Like look at the bokeh balls in the background here. And my angle was slightly different here, so we're not looking at the same thing in the background, but it's close. And it just is so buttery fricking smooth in both of them. So great, I'm into it. Uh, this one's not really a fair comparison because somehow I managed to focus on two different parts of the image, but I mean, really close between the two. I don't feel like one of these is necessarily better or worse than the other. And then when you crop in on it, you can see where this is just tack sharp in here, wherever this, this must be where this camera focused. And the film ended up over here somewhere a little bit. But I mean, you see this blue shift in the shadow? You're getting that here in film where you're not getting that on the Fuji, which is interesting. More bocalicious beauty. Uh, I mean, those are really close. Not to the point where you can't tell the difference, but if I didn't know there was a difference, I might not be able to tell. Like I don't see an aggressive grain in this shot. I don't see the contrast doing stupid things in either one of them. The shadows and highlights are more or less playing the same game in terms of contrast and color. Ah, it just looks good. Like, yeah, the 645 is bigger, so the crop is different. And you, once you know that they're different, you can look at them and start spotting the differences. But I mean, if you come in on these, they both look pretty good. I've got a plane of focus here in these chain links and a plane of focus that's here in these ones. But like, dude, this is pretty good. Considering the price difference of the cameras, like. We're holding up reasonably well here. Here's Alex looking beautiful as always. Um, I don't have an example of what his hat actually looks like. I'm pretty sure it's closer to this color than to this color. I do notice some weird 
magenta tendencies in some of these Fuji files, which surprises me a little bit. I, in my experience, Fuji has been known for greens, blue greens. Um, and, I'm, and I feel like I'm getting more of that out of the Portra than I am out of the Fuji, which has got, especially in this shot in the shadows, there's a lot of magenta going on here, which is interesting. I think this is probably truer to color. But if we come, give me that. If we come in on these, um, you can see that I botched the focus here. The Fuji is focused on the lav mic receiver, whereas the Pentax is focused on his hat where it belongs. I did a lot of botching of focus. I mean, really not that much to call home about here. Um, both sharp, both gorgeous in the background. They're both doing what they're supposed to do. If you look at this tree, which is the same as this tree, I mean, you're, you're more or less in the right place. I prefer the color of the Portra better. Maybe that's just because I'm used to it. I'd rather have like a blue-green shadow than this funky magenta shadow. It just feels wrong to me. Bright-ass daylight. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, looks cool. This is weird. I don't like this color. The building is this color. Like what? Fuji, what the fuck? Why is this so yellow? Green. Green, yellow. Gross. I do like this little baby specular highlight, though. Both cameras are doing a great job rendering that. Uh, this one was a slightly more difficult color test. I underexposed it on the digital enough that we're getting a color that feels good. Uh, I've overexposed it, apparently, on the film somehow using the same settings because I'm maybe just that dumb. Uh, this one doesn't look quite as good. If I had darkened it down, we'd probably get there. But if you come in on it, it seems like I missed the focus on this one, which we've switched sides because I'm here to fuck with you. This is the digital and this is the film. And it looks like the Fuji just botched it. Good color though. Excellent color, I would say. This though. That's really close. So as far as the macro capabilities of each camera, the up close ability of each camera using that 120 millimeter macro, it's really good. It's just solid. I mean, like, sure, you can, just looking at this, you can tell which one's digital and that's fine, but they're both very good. And I feel great. I would feel great using either of these. Same thing here, like you're gonna use the camera up close, looks awesome. Again, I screwed the pooch on the focus with the Fuji. Which you can see here, <laughs> dummy. Bathtub in your front yard, 10 out of 10 recommend. I mean, nothing, nothing crazy here. When you punch in on them and apparently switch sides. Yeah, we are switching sides here, so I'm just here to mess with you. Uh, you can tell which one is digital, and it looks good, but so does the film. One of the things I like to look at is like a, how a, a real bright out of focus area will look. So you've got these guys out here versus these little guys down here, and they're actually quite similar. It's a reasonably sharp edge on some of those out of focus areas, which I don't generally prefer. I like it to be a little softer, but both good. And then we're skipping a couple and going straight to the end. So here's our pumpkin. And uh, I did a little bit of color futzing with these to see if I could get the digital to match the film and I couldn't, like not even close. Uh, and I prefer the film, I think. These blue shadows feel truer to what that looked like to my eyeball than these shadows, which I've done work on and still aren't even close. This green also feels more appropriate somehow. Who would have thought Portra doing a better job with blue greens than Fuji? That blows my mind a little bit. And there's the crop. Uh, so showing the detail, both good. I mean, no big deal. So as far as results go, they're both excellent. Using the Pentax is better, but if tack sharp, whatever is the answer and money is not a concern, 
then sure, get the Fuji, 100%. Especially if you're gonna go for the 100 megapixel version, the more modern one, because it's bigger, right? If I had to pick a camera where the result was not the outcome, I would shoot the Pentax. Or if I had to pick a camera to shoot on a budget, I would pick the Pentax, because that's like a $1,000 camera, as opposed to the $5,000 kit that was the Fuji 50R and the 120 millimeter macro. So for a fifth the price to get a result that's really close, like close enough for real world use, sold, I'm into that. But if it's gotta be tack sharp and like perfectly in focus and you've got the time and you've got the money, the Fuji makes sense. I'm going to continue shooting with the Fuji for sure. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to shoot a roll through the Pentax 645 again, or if I want to do some Pentax 67 action. I don't know the answer to that question. So, but anyway, if you want a Pentax 645N, I've got one for sale. It's got this cool 120 millimeter macro, and now you've seen what the results look like. So like, hit me up if you want it. I think it's on our website, actually, right now. You can buy it this very moment, as soon as this video goes out. <laughs> or not, it's fine. Anyway, that's my digital versus uh, film comparison. Thanks for joining us. See you in the next one.